What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 31 of our Liverpool FC Let's Play here in Football Manager 2016. Hopefully you guys are good. Today, massive game. We're going to be taking on Barcelona in the Champions League. If you missed last episode, it was against Arsenal. They won the league last year. Of course, we finished second. You need to go check it out. If you haven't seen it, it's one of the more memorable episodes, I'll say. I, won't, I don't want to give too much away, but it was a good one. Well... Kind of. Anyway, let's get into today's game. It's against Barcelona. It's in the Champions League. Two games to tell you guys about since the last episode. And looking at them here, two wins. The first of which was against Chelsea. A little bit of revenge. I feel like what we showed in the last game against Arsenal, which as you can see was 3-5, is that we can actually score. You know, we're not short of goals against the big Premier League teams. There just needs to be times where our defence doesn't completely collapse. And this wasn't one of those games, fortunately. Um, as you can see, Mustafi with an own goal. That was actually a weird goal where Sturridge like, hammered it across the box and it hit the defender and went in. But Sturridge got a goal. And Yuri Tillemans getting a goal too. Really good for him. This guy, loads of potential to fulfil. A very good wonder kid. Uh, and a good hot prospect in our team. So for him to get his first kind of senior goal at the club, really pleasing. Obviously wasn't in the league, so um, I guess he's still got to strive for that. But it, he's off the mark and, um, yeah, pretty pleased about that. Anyway, in the next game against Norwich, I decided to rest quite a few players. Going into today's game, we didn't have much of a break between this Norwich game and, well, the game that we're coming up today against Barcelona. So I did rotate things around just a little bit. You'll notice up front I start with Barbosa and Mbolo. And as you can see, Mbolo grabbing two goals. Uh, a player who last year won the Young Championship Player of the Year was in the Championship kind of um, best 11. But for a player who we paid £20 million for, he had rarely shown glimpses, I guess, of what I was hoping to get for him and from him, I guess, for the fee that we played. But as you can see, he's done fairly well. Obviously, established himself well last year. And this year, two goals in this game and uh, two goals in five for the season. Pretty pleased with that. Norwich are bottom of the league. You can also see Barboza played. Didn't get a goal, which was a little bit disappointing. But yeah, all in all, it was a pretty good performance. Anyway, in terms of what's been going on off the pitch, there's been some more regen signings, and these are ones which actually I think were done at the start of the season. I just forgot to tell you guys about them. But these are deals that... Um, where we're signing them from countries where the player has to reach the age of 18 or 17 in order to transfer across. So I guess we'll look through these really quickly. First one here, Edu, Brazilian, 16 years old, 820 caps. He looks like a really nice centre-back. 19 determination I like. Uh, good anticipation, good bravery. Um, there are attributes which can be hard to kind of drill into a player, I guess. It's a shame his concentration isn't higher, but he has really good decisions and positioning for his age. Not incredible physicals by any means, but at the age of 16... He's got loads of time to kind of improve. As you can see, he's been coming on off the bench a lot in the um, kind of league for uh, Sao Paulo. He's made 32 league appearances. So he's playing lots of first-team football. Uh, he doesn't transfer until the first of the first 2019. So that's about a year and a half away, or a year and a quarter, really. Uh, so he's got some time to develop in the first team there at Sao Paulo. The next player is uh, Safinkan Eldik. This guy is a Turkish striker. We agreed to sign him a little while ago, this guy. As you can see, he's not played yet in the Super League, but he is only 17 years old. He's already playing in the Turkish under-21 side. And, uh, yeah, we signed him for £7 million, but it's £3 million up front. Uh, and if he plays 50 league games, we'll pay £3.5 million. A few of these deals follow a similar mould, whereby after a certain amount of either uh, appearances in the first team or in the league, we pay a little bit of a lump sum. I find that as a nice way to cover ourselves. Obviously, if a player is really good, then he's probably going to make 50 appearances for the league. But the chances are that if he doesn't quite fulfil his potential, any player really, um, we'll be selling him on sooner than... Um, I guess he makes those 50 appearances. Anyway, the next player we have here is Ivan Lazarevich, uh, who's a good player, but he's got a lot of glaring weaknesses. When you look at this, incredible player, really. He's only 17. We're paying under a million pounds for this guy from Partizan. We're paying 850k. My big worry here really is his poor consistency and his injury proneness. But he's got a lot of room to improve. He's a strong player. Um, I mean, he's 17. There's every chance that he can get a little bit more consistent. The injury proneness is probably going to be something that always overshadows him. But he looks like such a good player. And for under a million pounds, I couldn't really pass up the opportunity. Anyway, the last signing that has been confirmed 100% is this guy who I need to come up with a nickname for him. I'm thinking I might call him the Dragon, just because his name's pre-drag, because I'm not going to be able to say that that name very quickly. Radoslavjevic. I tried. 
I tried. Um, but yeah, this guy, he's actually another Serbian. So I know I have a few Serbian viewers. I'm doing this for you here. Um, but he looks like a really good defensive midfielder and centre mid. And he's only 17. He's playing regularly in the under-21s, making lots of league appearances for Red Star. And he joins us, actually, in just a few months. Anyway, there's one more transfer that I did just kind of glance over. And it's this guy, David Radmore. Now, he plays for Everton. But he's incredible. He's 17 years old. He's a centre-back. We already have a lot of hot prospect centre-backs. But I know a lot of you guys in the comments have been telling me, Jack, we need more English players here. So my transfer budget, as you guys will know, isn't too great at the moment. In fact, it's zero. And our wage budget, you know, it could be better. But financially, the club's in an incredible situation. So what I managed to ask the board to do was try and sign this guy. So currently, the board has agreed that they wanted to try and sign him. I'm hoping we're going to get someone with somewhere with this because he looks absolutely incredible. He's got a few pros and a few cons, but he's a player who, I don't know, I feel like if we can get him for £6 million, I wouldn't be too fussed because he's a young English talent. He'd add to a few other players who are English who we have in our side, and I'd be pretty darn pleased to get him. I just want to show you guys the nationalities of our players because... Um, I guess whenever you, you uh, develop a team, like particularly like when you're going for like a, a squad like this, when your under twenty ones is really stacked, you can often like not you know not have too many English players. I would like to point out we do have four English players in this list now. I'm not sure how many of them will actually make it to the first team, but I'd expect maybe at least well at least one of them to. If I was going to pick one out, say Collier, who is currently on loan at MK Dons now, he is definitely the, the player in the youth team I'm most excited about from an English perspective. Not the best mentors, but just looks like an absolutely incredible athlete who could really develop into a really nice attacking midfielder. Um, but we have got some English talent, but I'd like to add more. So that is something that I am going to be looking to do over the next few years. You know, Maybe we get a nice regen day or two. I've not had... Um, any incredible regens come up just yet. I think the best one we've had, if we just have a quick look, we had Paul Hecker, actually, who came up, who looks quite good. Although, to be honest, his potential, or at least what's perceived as his potential, has really shot up in recent times. He could be a good player. He's improved a lot recently. There is also one more guy, and it's this guy, Ryan Cahill, who's okay, but I don't think he's ever going to be good enough for the first team, and he's Welsh, so he's not even English. Um, but yeah, he's they're okay players. They're both players that have been developed at the kind of youth team. We also have here Adi Kanye. Uh, I hope I pronounce that right. This guy actually is at Liverpool in real life. Uh, he looks okay. He looks like quite a nice attacking midfielder. How much potential he actually has, I guess we'll see. He's only 18. Loads of room to develop. Uh, he looks pretty decent, though. So anyway, that's a little bit of a rundown of the squad and how we're getting on there. Uh, just looking at the Champions League, going into today's game against Barcelona, we could do with getting a point from this, but in reality I know that's going to be a big ask. We are at home, so perhaps it's a slightly easier game. Looking at the way the fixtures fall, after this game against Barcelona we played Legia twice away and then at home. We then played Napoli at home before our last game is against Barcelona away. Really, we need to have the kind of place of second or first wrapped up by the second to last game because going to the um, San, uh, I was just about to say the San Siro, Jesus Christ Jack the Camp Nou um, it, it's going to be tricky to get some points it's fair to say. Anyway I feel like I just want to quickly do a recap on the tactics and the instructions even though it says them up here a few people have been saying you know show us your instructions and stuff because you know why not. Um, these are the instructions that I'm using on this tactic they've not really changed I don't think since the first year at all. There might be some minor changes. We mixed around the player roles a little bit last season um, to try and better balance the midfield. But this is how I'm playing. Uh, in terms of player instructions, I'm going to flip through these really quick so you will have to pause the video if you you know, you know, want to have a look. But you can see here for the fullbacks, we've gone we shoot less often, get further forward, pass it shorter, run wide with the ball. That's the same on both sides. Both centre backs pass it shorter. Again, pass it shorter on the centre defensive mid. Move into channels on the roaming playmaker. Roam into channels or move into channels in the left centre mid. I want these guys really to kind of push forward and uh, support the attack. Uh, fewer risky passes and pass it shorter. Something that I've got everything except I think the roaming playmaker in a, kind of the further back positions. It's just because I want to keep hold of the ball where possible. Uh, centre attacking mid to to no additional instructions there, none for the poacher and none for the complete forward. So there you go, there's a little tactical rundown I guess. So anyway, let's get into today's game. We are taking on Barcelona. As I mentioned, I did rest some players against Norwich and I let a lot of the defence go out and have a, a break from training for just two days to get them back in ship shape. 
Uh, and as you can see, they're in tip-top shape, which is pretty decent. I mean, they're not 100% condition, but 93 I can certainly live with. Um, so yeah, let's go into today's game. Taking on Barcelona at Anfield. Barcelona are the favourites. Um, the pundit thinking it's going to be a draw. Nathaniel Klein, our key player, I'm hoping he can put in a good performance for us here. Looking at that Barcelona side, it's kind of what you'd expect. Um, I've never heard of this guy. Actually, I have. He's Dutch, isn't he? Signed from Ajax. That's my call. He was. See? I do know football. I'm not going to try and say his name, though. I'm going to butcher that. Um, at the back, they've got Bartra. He's quite good. Where's he from? Oh, he's from Barcelona. Am I living under a rock, or has he just not played much for Barca? Maybe I'm living under a rock. Uh, he's played a little bit. Not a ton, really. Um, okay. I, I think I'm ready for this game. I think. I'm looking at the team. I feel I feel confident with what we've done. I mean, it's going to be very difficult to cancel out Suarez, Neymar, and, um, well, Messi. How, how can you forget Messi? It, it's going to be very tricky, but we're going to do our utmost. We're going to attack because we're at home. Um, I kind of feel like Oh gosh! Don't don't just score from kickoff. Can you imagine? That'd be the an ominous sign of things to come if Suarez had a shot there. Of course, Suarez, a former player playing against well, his former employees. Can we get a goal? A corner whipped in, headed away though. Sturridge out wide, go out wide. All just putting a ball of a century for Kurt Zuma with a poacher's finish. He gets his first of the season. Five minutes in, we're beating Barcelona boys. What is happening? Well, we couldn't have asked for a better start there. I, I wanted Sturridge to go out wide. I think it was Henderson who took the corner initially. But he decides he just wants to pull out a pass of inspiration. And Kurt Zuma, or Danny Alves with a first poor first touch. But Kurt Zuma, that is a nice finish for a centre-back. Showing some killer instinct in front of goal. Makes it 1-0. And we are loving it. What a start. Now, I don't want to get carried away. Because last episode we were winning 3-0 at half-time. That's taught me never to prematurely celebrate ever, um, and not even kind of, you know, enjoy when you're winning 3-0, but it's a good start, and we have a chance here, Henderson, edge of the that box, Klein, can you whip it in, he can, PK, oh, it's an effort, storage, blocked away, I think, though, uh, looking a little bit nervy, Barcelona, defensively, looking at the stats, they are yet to have a shot on goal, Cataldi with a bruised thigh, uh, I'm not going to risk that, I'm going to move Henderson into box-to-box -box midfielder, and we're going to bring on Thiago Maia to play the centre-mid defend role for us. The Brazilian, pretty experienced in our team. Hopefully, he can do a job there for us. Looking at it, 25 minutes in. Barcelona still yet to have a shot on target, although whenever Suarez gets into your box, you have to clench your buttocks. You know, it's going to be a rough ride. And now Messi, and now Suarez, Sacco, what a tackle. Dani Alves, though, still could put the ball in the box. Oh, it's happened. It was just going to happen, wasn't it? Luis Suarez was going to score against Liverpool in this game. We moved down to third in our group. Sacco with the initial tackle. Just doesn't really re-pick him up. And as you can see here, Suarez just darts onto the near post. Mignolo probably should do better there. In fact, you definitely should do better. But, um, you know what? Both keepers are the same for both teams. And I can't look at that as an excuse. Looking at it, Napoli now beating Legia. That's okay, I guess, really. We want Legia to win, if possible, because they're debatably the weaker team in the league, the team we have the best chance of beating. So if they could beat Napoli, that would help us get second. But, well, Napoli are tearing them a new one. It's 2-0. So that's probably not going to happen. So we're really looking for it to get the win here, although we're on the attack. Lacazette, Goethe, we've looked fairly good here. Sturridge tackle, but Zuma will head it back forward. And now Sturridge moving out wide. Can he whip in a ball? Or can he run inside? Run in. He has an effort. It's saved. But the rebound is there. That is a fantastic goal by Daniel Sturridge. His 10th goal of the season. Would have been so much nicer if he could have put it in at the first time of asking. But he cut inside here. Onto that left peg of his. Hit it in to Stegen. Parried it away. But, well, that's a great finish from a tight angle. I can get behind that on his weaker foot. Danny Sturridge. Reed gives us the lead, although now we need to defend. Now we need to defend Moreno. Goetze, we, we can counter here. We've got men going forward. Mario Goetze, the Bayern Munich former player. Can he whip in a ball? No, he cuts inside. It's a solo effort. That would have been an absolutely incredible goal if he'd managed to get that in somehow. There were options. It was a tad selfish, um, but it was a good effort nevertheless. And at half-time, it looks like it's going to be 2-1. And Barcelona, only the one shot on goal at all. Chance. There's a minute left of the half. Can we get extend our lead further? Just maybe. Moreno, can he whip in a ball of quality? He can. Can't find storage though. Now Danny Alva is going to look to clear. 
But Moreno, great defending by him. He was linked with a move to Barcelona at one point a few seasons ago, but Lacazette here. Sturridge, hit that. It's in. It's 3-1. We are having a laugh out here. We're having a laugh. Although this has a horrific sense of deja vu, having scored three goals in the first half. But I'm pretty happy with that performance. Sturridge here, nice little turn. He uses his body well to shield it away and then just places it again on his right foot. He's loving that today. And at half-time, it's going to be 3-1. And Daniel Sturridge is putting in what is a man-of-the-match performance. He got man-of-the-match last game against Arsenal with his hat-trick in the first half. He's got two goals so far this game. Worth giving a shout-out, I guess, to Lacazette because he did get the assist there. It was a nice little pass in. And things are looking pretty promising here. We're on the attack from kickoff. Go on, my son. It's not going to be a highlight. It never is. Or is it? Klein. Well, I, I believed for just a second. Henderson whips in the ball. Meyer headed away. I thought that was the chance. Now Messi with the ball. We need to defend. <laughs> I know that sounds obvious, but with the strike force that Barcelona have, we cannot afford to switch off. I mean, we, we showed that we can switch off in the last game against Arsenal, but we need to not do that if possible. That would be great. Um, but we're on the attack here. Come on, Klein. Whip it in. Blocked away. Who was that by? By the guy's name, I can't say. Klein, though. Second effort. Can he put it in? Again, cleared away by the guy's name, I can't say. Answers on a postcard for the, the Dutch defender. Meyer, though. Sturridge. Hits it. That is a fantastic save by Tostegan from that effort. And Alves able to scramble the ball away. I'll tell you what. This has been a very, very pleasing performance. You might notice my voice is a little bit raspy. I decided first thing in the morning to play FM. Now, that's always a risky move. It can set the tone for a day. But if this is the tone of my day, it's going to be a really good day. Because right now, it's 3-1. Unfortunately, Napoli are winning 3-0. This is a fantastic way to bounce back. Potentially, oh, hit that. Oh, he's nearly scored again. Sturridge is just tearing Barcelona a new one. Um, but no, it's really pleasing. Particularly after that last result against... Um, against Napoli to lose 5-3 to bounce back with a win here against Barcelona would be incredible we have a set piece headed away by Bartra is it Bartra or Bar I don't know answers on a postcard again Moreno can he whip it in he can't it's blocked away now Barcelona going to look to hit us on the counter shut down Suarez to Ran to Geis cleared away Ball across to Alves. Don't let him shoot. Messi there. Sitting deep. Deep for Messi. Oh, Iniesta. Fantastic save by Mignolet, though. Barcelona have only their first clear cut of chance of their game there. They've only had three shots on target. We've scored three goals. We've we've had a little bit more possession. We've had a lot more chances going our way. And we've taken them. And well, with ten minutes left, I'm starting to become a believer that this is a result that we are going to hold on to. I'm going to bring on Firmino for Goetze. That is our third and final sub of the game. Now we just need to see this game out. I don't want any nonsense after last game. This is a, a fantastic way to bounce back. We beat Chelsea. We beat Norwich. This could be our third win in a row. We've got a few easier games coming up now. Maybe this is the result to put us on the straight and narrow. And it looks like it is going to be. It's certainly going to be a win. But by how many? We still have a chance, maybe. Meyer to Klein. Whip it in. There's options. Puts it in. Unfortunately, PK heads away. That is probably going to be game, set, and match. It is. Liverpool 3, Barcelona 1. Fantastic result. That's probably one of the best results we've had so far in this save. We completely shut down Barcelona. We go ahead of them in the group. We've got two easier games against Legia. Potentially Napoli. I think, well, Napoli do have to play Barcelona twice now. So we could be in a really, really nice situation if we win our next two games. And yeah, what a result that is. Could hold it out with a bruised fire. That could be a lot worse. Sturridge getting man of the match. He had a fantastic game there. Um, yeah, not a lot more I can say about that. That is a fantastic result. In terms of when we'll be back for the next episode, I think it will either be the Napoli game or the Manchester United game. I'm going to go on a little bit of a, a longer break, I guess. We're going to go for about two months. Maybe I'll do like a game in between. The Brentford game could be interesting because they have a few of our former players. I'll see how many of them are coming up. Um... Obviously, they are a championship team, but it's in the Capital One Cup fourth round, so it could be an interesting one. Um, but yeah, that's going to wrap up this video from me, guys. Thank you so much for watching, as always. Hopefully, you have enjoyed. If you have, please do smash the like button. Uh, if you've got any comments, leave them down below. And other than that, it is me, Jack, and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.